Obviously, big story number two is Paul Ryan stepping down as speaker. You consider that a big story? What to you is a small it, story? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, probably Honduran transgender people trying to cross the border. It's a big deal. Really... They're getting rejected. They're facing persecution. People make fun of their acrylic nails. 1,500 of them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think the speaker probably stepping down might be might be slightly larger. But it's but yeah. what's funny about this is that Ryan is just he, he he's like pig he's sort of like Pigpen from from Peanuts cartoons. He's just walking around and there's a, and there's a big cloud that just follows him everywhere. No one likes and no matter him. how hard he tries to right exactly. No matter how hard he tries to escape it. No matter how nice he is, it's just like. He, he's he's Kenny from South Park. He's just constantly getting hit by a car, and it doesn't matter <laughs> is, what he does, right? He tries to be nice to Trump, and all the Trumpkins are like, ah, oh, they threw out Paul Ryan because he wasn't nice enough to Trump. And then he's cri he's critical of Trump, and the entire media goes, you know what? He deserved that because he wasn't critical enough of Trump. It's like, what do you want the guy to do? Well, okay, like I, I understand Paul Ryan was a bad fit for Speaker of the House because to be a good Speaker, you either have to be manipulative by nature, right? Like a, you, you have to be like a Tip O'Neill type. Or you have to be some grand visionary with a program for the party that's backed by the base of the party, like Newt Gingrich circa 1994. And Paul Ryan really wasn't either of those things. But he's a relatively, sin I think he's a sincere guy who's kind of wonkish. He doesn't like manipulating. Uh, I think he was too weak in standing up to McConnell. I think he took a lot of hits for McConnell, frankly. You know, the people are saying, well, you know, he's the one who pushed the $1.3 trillion omnibus package. No, that was McConnell, okay, because Ryan passed an actual package that was, he, they passed appropriations bills in the houses. Those died in the Senate. So the only thing Ryan could have done to McConnell would have been to say, listen, I'm not going to pass anything. Right? You want to pass your omnibus? Well, I'm not going to pass package. it. Hold okay. on one second. You were going to uh, say something uh, that, Jared. Oh, I just think it's, I th it shocked me that Trump actually tweeted very nice things about Paul Ryan after he left. Well, like, I tell you, anybody who deserves to be kicked on the way out, it's... Uh, well, I'm shocked. I'm Paul shocked. Ryan. I had heard of this, but I'd never actually seen it. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Ryan's fan, Ben Shapiro. I think <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, you know, honest to God, it is, it is not that I am a Paul Ryan fan. I've been very critical of Paul Ryan yeah. for doing all these deals, but I think that if you are going to attribute the failure of a particular legislative Mitch agenda McConnell. to one of these three people, you know, McConnell, Trump, or Ryan, Ryan is third on that list. He's really third on that list. I don't think that he's second on that list. I don't think he's first on that list. Because remember, for every bad bill that is passed by McConnell and signed by Trump, there was a good bill passed by Ryan that was rejected by McConnell's Senate or was undercut by Trump. Well, well so hold on a second. He, he has compromised. This is what I will say, and this is the question that I think everyone has to decide for themselves about Paul Ryan, right? You're either universally hated because you are someone, or, or for a period of time anyway, so everyone has seasons in their lives. But if you find yourself universally hated, it's for one of two reasons. Either because A, you are incredibly principled and you've taken the hits, or B, you are completely spineless and so you've warped yourself into a pretzel where just everyone hates you because you can only be spineless for so long. It, it's, it, it, there isn't a whole lot of in-between if everyone dislikes you. I think Paul Ryan has made some decisions where he's kind of he's leaned in too much when he shouldn't. Um, I just think he's a so. Winner. I mean, listen, I, I agree with that, but I, but all I would say on that is that w let's put it this way: if Mitch McConnell were able to actually ram things through the Senate, we'd be talking about Paul Ryan as one of the great speakers ever, because ever again he's passing a lot of good bills, and then what happens? They die in the Senate, and Mitch McConnell passes a bad bill, and then Mitch McConnell goes back to Ryan and says, "Listen, you can either pass my bad bill or we can pass nothing," yeah. and then Paul Ryan, instead of saying to Mitch McConnell, "Fine, we'll pass nothing." That's where he's weak, right? That's where he should say to McConnell, go back to the drawing board, figure it out. Right. But that's not exactly what happened here. But uh, I do find it, uh, watching watching fans of Trump like jump on Paul Ryan's grave is kind of amusing to me, just because Paul Ryan is the reason that you have a tax cut. Paul Ryan is the reason that some of Trump's legislative agenda has been passed with regard to, to changes to the individual mandate. Yeah. Right? Mitch McConnell is the reason why Justice Gorsuch is on the bench. Right. Uh, you, you can rip on the people in the legislature for, for just so long. I really think one of the reasons that Ryan is dropping out, aside from from the obvious, is another relatively obvious reason, which is that he's expecting the Republicans are going to get creamed in November. And he actually doesn't want to be around to be blamed for that. He knows that the, the typical well, see, that would lend itself move, to what I'm saying is, is in the face of some in the face of adversity, he, he, he's wilting a little bit. We, he knows it's an uphill battle here. And so it could seem like he's I think trying to take him out. Uh, but, he, you know, he is the reason for a lot of those things. As you said, I will I will absolutely grant him that. He's also the again, reason that uh, Sven Peter wears short shorts and does P90X. So he's inspiring <laughs> as a figure all around. Last thought. And then we do have to go. Yeah, again, he, I don't think that he is the greatest speaker ever. I don't think he was fit for the job. I think that he wasn't particularly wonderful. But I think that to blame Paul Ryan as sort of the face of the old Republican Party, and now this is just more evidence that Trump has taken over the party. Like, didn't we find that out in 2016? He's the president. So I'm not sure what exactly has been added here. And do you really think anybody who takes over for Paul Ryan is going to be, you know, like thousands of leagues better than Paul Ryan? First of all, the person most likely to take over for Paul Ryan, unfortunately, in November is Nancy Pelosi, yeah. given the current polling data. So that's that's really scary. She's, to me, the worst. She's the only person I've ever said I oh. actively believe is even far worse than Hillary Clinton. I've been saying that for years. 